But we're continuing in Acts, uh, in our prayer meeting, and we've come to Acts chapter 16. We've finished the first 15 chapters of Acts. That means we're more than halfway through. Acts has 28 chapters. Uh, and we, we've discovered that every chapter has a reference to prayer. Uh, the New Testament <coughs> church is a house that prayer built. No doubt about it. And you probably have figured out by now, we're going to find a reference to prayer in every chapter in the book of Acts. And certainly so in, in Acts chapter 16. As a matter of fact, there are three kinds of prayer that are specified in Acts chapter uh, 16. And the first one is uh, a prayer that I call guidance-seeking prayer. Guidance-seeking prayer. Look at verse 7 of Acts chapter 16. And after they were come to Bithynia, after they were come to uh, Mysia, Mysia, M-Y-S-I-A, Mysia, they assayed, that is, they uh, determined to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Does, God, does God's Spirit sometimes say no? I think He does. Sometimes He says, whoa. Uh, sometimes He says, go. Uh, but in this case, uh, He said, no, the Spirit suffered them not to go that way. So that was a prayer experience of God's guidance, but it goes on. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Is this a prayer experience? I think it is. Mm -hmm. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him. He asked uh, Saul, uh, asked Paul, saying, Come over to Macedonia <coughs> and help us. What, uh, what does it mean to be coming over into Macedonia? It means coming over into Asia Minor. It means leaving the area of the what we sometimes call the, the biblical sites, so to speak, and coming over into Europe. That's really what that means. He's going to be starting seeing Europeans come to Christ. After he had seen the vision, immediately we, hey, here's an interesting thing. There has never been in the book of Acts in the first 15 chapters where... The writer of Acts said, we. It was always he, they, <clears throat> them. Now it's we and us. What does that mean? That means that the writer of the book of Acts is now joining the Apostle Paul on his journeys. Because from now on, it's we and us. <clears throat> when we read beginning in, in chapter 16, verse 10, who is the writer of the book of Acts? Luke. Luke Dr. Luke himself. And so now Luke has joined the Apostle Paul. So it says in verse 10, After he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And so it says, Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came on a straight course to Samothracia, and from there to Neapolis, that's not Neapolis, Tennessee, but that's Neapolis in Asia Minor. And from there to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding for certain days, okay? So this is guidance-seeking guidance prayer, these, these verses, where uh, the Apostle Paul and Luke and others in that missions group uh, sought guidance from the Lord. They got a no, and then they got a yes. By the way, who was this man who appeared to Paul in a vision and said, come over to Macedonia and help us? Who was that? The Holy Spirit. Some, some people believe it was the Holy Spirit or Jesus himself. Some people believe it was Luke because Luke uh, was a, a Gentile and of some European background that Luke himself appeared uh, in, in this vision. Some believe that it was a Macedonian himself, just someone unknown to Paul, but over in the area of Europe that he, uh, he'd be going to. Uh, there are other names. I was just kind of looking over some of the possible uh, names. Uh, some people say it was just a lost person. 
someone needing Christ. And so mm -hmm. here is like a, a, a lost person. Does God guide us in dreams? I believe he sometimes does. Now, sometimes we have a dream because of the bologna sandwich we ate before uh, we uh, went to bed that night. But uh, or there may be other reasons that we have some kind of a special dream. We've, we've been concentrating on something, and the dream is, sort of goes along that line. But I believe God speaks through dreams as well. Uh, Y'all have heard many people say, not just me, but uh, the way a lot of evangelism is happening in pagan groups today, like in Muslim groups and so forth, is that people are dreaming dreams. And when the missionary comes and says, let me tell you about Jesus, they'll often say, we know about him. We dreamed about him. This man that you're talking about that died on the cross and rose again, we, we know about him. They've, they've had dreams. So, so God speaks through dreams. I, I don't think we can always count on that that some kind of dream, you know, we've had, had a dream, so therefore we, we act. We, we must discern, <coughs> was, this a, was this a spirit guided uh, dream or not? But in this case, we know that this was a vision from God and Paul was taking the gospel into other continents in, in, in the world. It was not just going to be confined to the Middle East now, it was going to be going further than that. So there is guidance seeking prayer. That's a hyphenated word, guidance-seeking prayer, where we go to God and we're asking him to lead us. God gave a no, and God gave a go. And our, our task, I guess you could say, when we're in prayer is discerning whether God is saying go or, or no, or whoa, uh, you know, wait, uh, wait just a while. Uh, we as a congregation need guidance-seeking prayer. We as individuals need guidance seeking prayer we we want the holy spirit to lead us now we have to be careful about people saying god told me to do such i, I remember in my lifetime one of the uh, assassins that made national news climbed up in a tower in the university of texas yeah. and picked people off and do you remember what what he said that happened God told him to do that. He was instructed by God to do that. Now, was he instructed by God to do that? Absolutely. Why do we know? Because God already said, you shall not murder. You shall not kill. And so he, he ought to already know that that couldn't have come from God, that he goes up in a tower and picks people off. Uh, but, but that's a more dramatic thing. Sometimes people said, well, God told me to tell you this. You, you need to be sure that that's not contrary to the scripture. God never acts in any way that contradicts scripture. And so if somebody says, God told me to do this, and it's very obvious a contradiction to scripture, God did not tell them to do that because God does not contradict himself. Amen? So guidance-seeking prayer means that we... Uh, we, we let this be our, our guide. We let the word of God uh, guide us and direct us. And when we're, when we're sensing or when someone's telling us that God told them such, we need to be sure that it squares with Scripture. And then we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us discern, is that from God? But once we're there, can we ask God for guidance? Yes. Amen. Does he, does he guide his children? He, he does. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He, he loves to guide like uh, a shepherd guides his sheep. He, he loves to give, give us guidance. And so this is a legitimate prayer that Luke and Paul have and others in their party have that, uh, that they seek guidance. Okay? There's a second thing, though, and it begins in verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where, this is in the city of Philippi now, in Asia Minor, where prayer was wont to be made. In other words, where prayer was being done. And we sat down and we spoke to the women who resorted thither. Okay, so here is, if there's guidance seeking prayer, that's one kind. Here is group meeting prayer. Here's a group. They're meeting together. They're praying together. Are they Christian women? I don't know. I know one of them was not. Lydia, 
who was uh, there, a seller of purple, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the Bible says. Let's just read those next two verses, 14 and 15. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, that's one of the seven cities in the book of the Revelation, uh, famous for its cloth, purple cloth, very uh, expensive, which worshipped God. So she was a God worshiper, God seeker. Was she a believer? Apparently not yet. Heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of by Paul. And she was baptized in her household. And then she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. <laughs> she persuaded us to do that. She, uh, she, she said, Please uh, come to our house. Uh, maybe that's like they were sort of saying, you know, it's meal time and we haven't eaten yet. And maybe Lydia said, well, hey, come, come to my house and eat. Some of you have heard me mention about Jolene's dad on a particular Sunday. You know, both Jolene's dad and mom have deceased years ago. Jolene's dad died while I was here as, as pastor in the 1970s. But he uh, was home alone on a Sunday. Mama King had moved had gone to visit family, and she said, Vaughn, when I'm gone, please don't uh, just come in the house after church and just pick up some snack and eat. Please, please get something good. Go out and eat. I know you don't like to do that as much on Sunday, but will you promise me that you'll get some good Sunday lunch? <coughs> he said, Estelle, I promise you I will. Well, he said after church on Sunday, he kind of <laughs> mentioned that Ms. King was out of town, you know, so the church family would hear hear that. No, and he said, no, no, nobody invited him to lunch after after church. He stood around. He said, even the custodian, he kind of mentioned to the custodian that Ms. King, he didn't invite him. He said, no, no, nobody invited him. So he said he got to the house and he opened the refrigerator door like men do and stood there looking into the refrigerator and thinking, well, I promised Estelle. So he closed the refrigerator door and he had an idea and he went to the phone. He called up one of the families in the church, the Fowlers. And the daughter answered the phone, the young adult daughter. And he said, uh, this is Preacher King. He said, I'm just thinking about y'all and I wanted to invite you over to the house and, uh, and uh, have, have lunch with me. And she said, Preacher King, we were just getting ready to sit down and have lunch ourselves here. And somebody said, we ought to have invited the preacher over here to eat with us today. She said, Preacher, why don't you come on over here? He said, thank you, I believe I will. <laughs> he gave them an invitation to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to respond. Uh, he gave them the opportunity to invite him over. Well, maybe that's what Paul and Luke and so forth did to Lydia. We don't know that, but we know that she said, please come over to our, our, my house. And she was going to be hospitable uh, to them. Uh, so this woman apparently was a God seeker and she was joining other women in prayer and she heard Paul preach the gospel and she responded. She became a believer and she wanted to be baptized and then she wanted to serve the Lord immediately. So that group prayer meeting uh, produced uh, some powerful results. So we, the first is a guidance-seeking prayer, and then there's a group meeting prayer. By the way, verse 16 also mentions that, and it came to pass as we went to prayer. And then it tells about a demon-possessed girl that uh, got free from those demons uh, at the word of the Apostle Paul. But it came to pass as we went to prayer. Where are they going? Well, more than likely up to the synagogue uh, to pray there in uh, Philippi. And there was certainly a Jewish uh, synagogue there. So whether there or whether they went back to the riverside uh, to, to go, uh, they, uh, we are uh, going to a prayer. So it's another group meeting prayer. So we've got two kinds thus far, guidance-seeking prayer and group meeting prayer. And then after that uh, young woman was released of her fortune-telling demon that had been in her life, uh, the people who were making money off of her got upset, got upset with Paul and the missionary team and tossed them into prison because they said, you know, we're going to lose money. This woman has gotten saved, and she's not going to be doing her fortune-telling, and they threw them into prison. And verse 25 says, 
And at midnight, Paul and Silas griped and complained. Oh, no, I read the wrong word. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. That's that famous midnight revival in the jail at Philippi when Paul and his missionary partner, Silas, uh, prayed and sang praises to God. And I call that groundbreaking prayer. Why do I call it groundbreaking prayer? What happened? Earthquake. earthquake. Yes, an earthquake came right uh, and suddenly, verse 26, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. This is, this is groundbreaking prayer. Were, were shaken and the prison doors immediately all were opened and everyone's shackles, their bands were loosed. And we got an attempt to suicide here. <clears throat> the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But why did he care? Because his life depended on keeping those prisoners. Roman jails, uh, the jailer, uh, he was responsible for the prisoners staying in jail and if not, he would have been executed. So he was just going to take care of that himself. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm. We don't have time to go into that. But isn't that what the church needs to be proclaiming today? Don't take your life. Don't ca cash it in. Don't do yourself any harm. Uh, there, There is a gospel that can free you. You don't have to kill yourself. Uh, but... Uh, he said, do thyself no harm, <clears throat> for we are all here. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things the church needs to say to our community is, hey, we're here. We're here to help. We're here to care. We're here to reach out to you. We're here to make a, a difference. We, we, haven't, we haven't left the ship. We haven't vacated the church. We're, we're still here. We need to say that to the Dalewood community. Dalewood We've been here these, what, 70 years? We're still here. We're, we're wanting to make a difference in your life and in, in, in your family. And then you know the rest of the story. What happened? The jailer got saved. He, uh, he, I, I, what do you think uh, Paul and Silas were singing? I don't know, but I guarantee you it was a gospel song. It, it was something that lifted up Jesus. It was about the cross, and it was about the salvation that Jesus uh, gives. And so he's under conviction, and he says, what, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And your household. I know you all have heard preachers preach about that. When a man gets saved and gets right with God, uh, his household is going to follow suit. I mean, it's just, it, it just happens. And, and it did happen. And it says that he was baptized, and, and all of his family got baptized. And what are they doing next? washing the stripes that they had put on the backs of those missionaries. They're, they're righting their wrongs. They're doing, doing uh, the right thing. So this was a groundbreaking prayer that Paul and Silas and the missionaries prayed uh, in, in that jail. So I love Acts 16 because of those three kinds of prayers. Guidance-seeking prayer, group-meeting prayer, and groundbreaking prayer. And here's the good thing about it. We can all pray those same kinds of prayers. Lord, please help me to know your will. Guidance-seeking prayer. Lord, help us as a group to pray together. Group meeting prayer. Lord, help us to shake our community for Christ and the gospel. Ground-breaking prayer. So uh, I just love those, uh, those prayer emphases and those prayer references in Acts chapter 16. And I'd love for you to make a comment. Anybody got a, a final word about either of those kinds of, of prayers? Or have you been involved in any of those guidance-seeking prayers or group meeting Colossians prayers? Colossians 15 says, uh, uh, let the peace of God uh, rule in your heart. Come yes, sir. When you make it a decision. Yes, sir. Trying to decide which way to go, I guess. Yes. When you try to... If you feel the spirit, you got love, joy, and peace part of it. Uh, yes, sir. The spirit. Yes, sir. I guess uh, you have to that's, try and decide which way right. to go. A great peace word that, that the Holy Spirit, that's one of the promptings he does is he gives us peace. 
when he's guiding us in a certain way and we try we and the lack of it too if we don't go there no no peace yes right amen good good word good. anybody else have a word about guidance yeah, seeking I know we have all said that what must i do to be saved maybe in some form or fashion in our lives yes sir but that's similar to what the people said after peter had preached his message that at, on, on the day of pentecost yes yes what yes, what, what? And, and their hearts were were pricked their hearts were uh, stirred within right. them the holy spirit right. has to do that work right. amen so what the jailer had said so. the the jailer had said that yep amen uh, I wonder if the Apostle Paul had the jailer in mind and Lydia in mind and the demon-possessed young woman in mind when he sat down and wrote a letter to the church at Philippi. And I wonder if they were sitting there when uh, the, the epistle reader read that church from the Apostle Paul at uh, the church at Philippi. And as he was thinking about them and talking about uh, rejoice in the Lord, and again, I say rejoice. You know, here was a jailer who was hopelessly lost. Here was a demon-possessed girl who was hopelessly controlled by Satan. Here were disciples that needed to be guided. And uh, now he's writing to the church at Philippi. So uh, the Philippians letter is one of the most joyful letters in the Bible. Yes, sir, Drew? Yes, sir. And I'm a society. We assume that the Lord wants us to go here, go that way, you know, and that uh, from what I understand in my own life anyway, he tells me to stay put, chill out, that kind of thing. And that's abide me and I am you. He's telling me like, uh, like he doesn't necessarily want me to get out there and do this, do that for my life. Uh -huh. He just wants me to basically be with him, chill out, you know. Be faithful. Like, uh, yes, of course. But uh, the idea I'm getting is... Uh, he that dwelt in the secret place and the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So, I mean, if you're going to be in that secret place and abide there, well, you can get out of it, too. You know, if you get sure. out there and go on over here, over there, you might make a mistake here <laughs> without getting it, getting out of it. You know, so you got to be careful about that. I understand you know? what you're saying, Drew. Yes. And he, we do know that he's made a clear-cut command that we share the gospel, that we be his witness wherever we are, whether we're confined in one place or whether he gives us an opportunity to be spreading the news abroad, we are to be his witness. Bloom yeah. wherever you are. Amen. <laughs> Bloom where you're planting. Bloom where you're planting. <laughs> okay. That's great. Any other word about <laughs> prayer guidance, group praying, groundbreaking prayer? Amen. Okay, well, let's let's pray together today. Uh, Jonathan, we're, we're going to be praying for you and, and Lindsay and Noah, and hope you have a great uh, trip. We'll we'll miss you, and we'll just struggle along. Our uh, <laughs> our our worship leader next Sunday is Mark Campbell, and uh, he's someone that Jonathan has known and uh, is aware that he would be available over these next two Sundays. Actually, he's going to be leading this coming Sunday because Jonathan will be away, and he's going to lead the next Sunday because Jonathan will be preaching that morning. I'll be gone uh, baptizing my young, our youngest grandson uh, that morning. And uh, so I look forward to that occasion and uh, look forward, to Jonathan, to you uh, preaching for us. How about leading us in uh, prayers? We're dismissed. Sure. Sure. <coughs> God, thank you for this time to study your word. And uh, we thank you for the, uh, the revelations that you give us of different ways that uh, the early church prayed. And God, I just pray that that can impact our lives here in 2023 as well. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for Brother Mike and for this lesson that he's brought us today. Uh, God, I pray for each person in this room, God, that we will uh, just go in peace and God, that you will give us a better understanding of your word uh, from this time today. God, we lift up once again all the prayer requests that mentioned earlier today. Pray that you'll be with each of those in their time of need. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.